हेलो डियर स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज श्रीमती अश्विनी एस असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर ऑफ मैथमेटिक्स प्रोग्राम बीएससी सब्जेक्ट मैथमेटिक्स पेपर वन थर्ड सेमेस्टर यूनिट मैथमेटिकल लॉजिक वीडियो फोर टॉपिक व्हिच वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस टुडे आर क्वांटिफायर्स एंड मेथड्स ऑफ प्रूफ नाउ लेट्स सी व्हाट आर दीस क्वांटिफायर्स यू नो इन सर्टेन प्रॉब्लम्स और इन सर्टेन सेंटेंसेस वी कम अक्रॉस दिस ऑल every sum for every there exists in a day to day life the phrases all every sum for every there exist used in a proposition or a statement or known as quantifiers so any sentences or propositions where you come across words like all every sum for every there exists these are known as quantifiers now let us consider these examples the first example says some functions are differentiable so the quantifier used here is sum next all triangles are right angled triangles the phrase which we have used is all so let's see the classification of quantifiers there are two types of quantifiers first one is universal quantifiers second one is existential quantifiers now what are these universal quantifiers the phrases for all for every for each and for any are called universal quantifiers when i say universal it is the entire thing so we will consider everything which is all it is denoted by the symbol for all now you are all familiar with this symbol right now let us see an example the example says for every integer x x cube is an integer now this is a statement we are going to write this in terms of a quantified statement now since we have given as integer you know z is a set of integer so i'm going to represent the set of integer as capital z and this is an open statement because it includes a variable x so our p of x will be x cube is an integer see in the bracket i have specified it is an open sentence why is it an open sentence because we are using a variable x now you have to write this you know for every integer x so when i have to write it in a symbolic form it says therefore for all x belongs to z comma x cube is an integer now what is this x cube x cube is p of x and this given symbol is nothing but a quantifier the second one is known as existential quantifiers that is they are imposing certain conditions certain things the phrases for some there exists are called existential quantifiers it is denoted by the symbol there exists example there exists a real number such that it is divisible by 4 now here it says real number and how do we denote a real number by capital r so we start the solution saying let capital r be set of real numbers now it says this number is divisible by 4 what is that number denoted by it is denoted by a variable x isn't it so what is our open sentence here p of x becomes x is divisible by 4 so how do i write this quantifier in symbols there exists x belongs to r comma p of x now let's see negation of a quantified statement the negation of a quantified statement is obtained by changing the quantifiers from universal to existential and vice versa which means to say wherever we have for all when i take its negation it becomes there exist wherever we have there exist when i take its negation it becomes for all and also replace the open sentences also by its negation that is if i have p of x its negation will become negation p of x see the first one says negation of for all x p of x as i told you negation of for all becomes there exist x so we get there exist x comma negation p of x the second one says negation of there exist x comma p of x now negation of there exist x is for all x comma now open sentence should have a negation symbol isn't it so it is negation of p of x now let us take a problem it says find the truth value of there exist x belongs to s a condition is x plus 3 is greater than 
and the set given to us 1, 2, 3, 4. So the problem is we have a set S consisting of 4 elements 1, 2, 3, 4 and it says this particular value of X should belong to these of the 4 numbers but the condition is that particular X value when you add it with 3 it should be greater than 5. Now let's consider S which is 1, 2, 3, 4. We will be considering X is equal to S. Now let me start one by one value. If I put X is equal to 1, what is 1 plus 3? 1 plus 3 is 4. 4 is not greater than 5. So it is not valid. Let me take X is equal to 2. When I take X is equal to 2, I get 2 plus 3 is equal to 5. You know 5 cannot be greater than itself. So that is also valid. Next value is I take x is equal to 3. When I take x is equal to 3, 3 plus 3 is 6, 6 is greater than 5, so it is true. So, there it says there exists, so it, the minimum value is 3, it can also take 4. But the minimum least value which is it's taking is x is equal to 3. Therefore, we say the truth value is capital T, which is true. The next problem is negate. We have a statement problem. So the first thing what you have to do is we have to write down the statement problem, identify the open sentences, identify the logical connective, write them in the quantified form, then negate it and in the end you should be writing it in the expression form or in the word form. So the problem says some prime numbers are even or all numbers are not prime numbers. So here what you have to do is wherever this not is there, we are going to remove that not and write the proposition. So what is this P of X? P of X is prime numbers are even. What is this Q of X? Odd numbers are prime. We are, remember here, we are not including not here. So the given proposition is, now let me write it in the symbol. It says sum, right? So there exists X comma. Prime numbers are even is nothing but P of X. So one statement is finished. What is, one open sentence is finished or one quantified statement is finished. Now what is the logical connective used? It is or symbol for all. It says all. So your symbol is for all x comma. Odd numbers are not prime numbers. But what is our Q? A Q is odd numbers are prime. But what is given in the question? It says not prime. So you will be writing it as negation q of x now the next step is we will be negating the entire given proposition so let me write negation for the entire thing then what i'll do is i will be taking negation for individual term so negation of the first term negation of or becomes and and negation of the second term you know negation of there exists becomes for all x a negation of an open statement will have a negation here so negation of p of x becomes negation p of x. Negation of or is and. Now negation of for all x becomes there exists x. And negation of, um, see here, you have negation of negation. You know negation of negation is the proposition itself. So you just get q of x. Now let's see how do we write it in words. So you have a symbol for all x, right? So all negation p of x prime numbers are not even and some odd numbers are prime numbers. So the answer which we get is all prime numbers are not even and some odd numbers are prime numbers. The next one is theorems. You know theorems are propositions or statements constructed or formed by using undefined, defined and axioms. This we have already learned. Now what is the something known as proof? The process of establishing that the theorem is true using rules or the laws of logic is called proof of a theorem. Usually how do you prove a theorem? We will be using certain rules or certain laws and we say we have proved this particular theorem. Now we have come to the last concept in this unit which is known as methods of proof. There are four methods of proof. First one is direct method, second one is indirect method, third one is proof by contradiction and the last one is proof by exhaustion. Now in the syllabus we have 
being given only direct and indirect proof. So we will be dealing with only these two proofs. The first method says direct proof. Now let's see what is this direct proof. In this proof we make use of given result and proceed further to get required conclusion which means to say whatever is being given you will be taking that as the starting point. We will be using certain results and then coming to the conclusion. So this is divided into three parts hypothesis, analysis, conclusion. Now let me see what is this hypothesis. What is this hypothesis? We take hypothesis as first assume P is true. That is if given a proposition P, we will assume it is true. Next part is analysis. Now how do we analyze a theorem? We start with hypothesis. Employ the laws of logic. We prove Q is true. Right? So we will be starting your analysis step with the hypothesis. We will be using certain rules or laws of logic and then we say your next proposition Q is true. And how do you write the conclusion? A conclusion becomes P implies Q is true. So in direct method we are following three different steps here. First is hypothesis assuming that the given one is true. Next is analysis. It starts with your hypothesis using certain rules or laws of logic. We prove Q is true. And in the conclusion, we say P implies Q is true. Now, let's see an example. It says, prove by direct proof that the square of an odd integer is an odd integer. Now, for example, let me take 5. You know, 5 is an odd integer. What is 5 squared? Obviously, it is 25. That is also an odd integer. So, numerically, we know it is true. But when it comes to symbolic form, let us prove it by direct method. Now it says square of an odd integer. I have to denote this odd integer by a notation. So I say let n be an odd integer. So let me take that n is odd integer as p. And what should I prove? I have to prove square of an odd integer. Now if n is an odd integer, what is its square? It is n square. So q is n square is odd. Now let me start with hypothesis that is I assume that n is odd. You know when I say a uh, number is odd, we usually represent it in the form 2a plus 1 for all a belongs to z. You know z is set of integers. Let me call this as equation 1. Next what I have to do is I will be squaring on both sides of equation 1. When I square it, I get n square is equal to 2a plus 1 whole square. This is of the form a plus b whole square. And what is this a plus b whole square? It is 4a square plus 4a plus 1. You know since this plus 1 is there, RHS is not divisible by 2. You know whenever a number is not divisible by 2, we say it is not an even number but an odd number. So from this we say that RHS is not divisible by 2. A conclusion is n square is not divisible by 2. Now you know if it is not divisible by 2, it should be a odd number. So implies n square is odd. We started with n is odd, right? And we wrote n is equal to 2a plus 1. We squared them. After simplification, we showed that it is not divisible by 2. Since it is not divisible by 2, it is an odd number. Next is indirect proof. This proof is considered by taking the given result in its negation form. That is, if P implies Q is given, we should prove negation Q implies negation P is true. Now you all remember, this negation in P, Q implies negation P is nothing but contradiction of a given conditional. So when I prove negation Q implies negation P is true, it is as well as saying that P implies Q is true. Example, prove by indirect proof that if m is an odd integer, then m plus 7 is even. So they've already given m to be an odd integer. So that I'm taking it as p. What am I supposed to prove? m plus 7 is even. So you have two propositions. p is m is an odd integer. q is m plus 7 is even. To prove that p implies q is true. 
we are using the contrapositive what is the contrapositive negation q implies negation p is true so i have to take its negation you know it is given as m plus 7 is even so here i'll be taking it as m plus 7 is not even but odd so you know when i say a number is odd its representation is 2a plus 1 that is m plus 7 is equal to 2a plus 1 for all a belongs to z now let me simplify by taking 7 to the RHS. so when i do that I get m is equal to 2a minus 6 out of which 2 is common. So when I take 2 common, I get 2 into a minus 3, which means your right hand side is divisible by 2 because it is 2 into a difference of 2 numbers. So whatever number you give, since you have multiplying it by 2, it is divisible by 2. So you know when uh, any expression is divisible by 2, it is even. So, this implies m is even. But what have we considered in the starting p as m is odd? So, this p becomes false, isn't it? If p becomes false, what happened to negation p? Negation p will obviously become true. Hence, we have proved that negation q implies negation p is true. Now, since we have proved negation q implies negation p is true, it is as well as saying p implies q is true. So we have learned two different methods.